because I have learned some more detailed information on what we're going to be talking about today in my study um, for sharing with you guys today on the power of abiding and it's such a powerful powerful extensive teaching that we could go weeks months on this teaching so I'm not sure how far we're gonna get through this because I want to take my time in delving in I want to take my time and go step by step kind of like we did with the trading uh, your cares for calm book we're gonna do the same thing. Typically when I do a Bible study, uh, if you ladies remember, before we did the Trading Your Cares for Calm, I would give you a handout and you would fill in the answers. Mama, you wanna sit there so it can be easier for you? Typically I'd give you a handout where you would fill in the answer. So today, I didn't do that for today. Today you have my notes. <laughs> you have my notes, you have the full teaching. And I did that on purpose, and I think I'm going to continue to go with that format because there's a lot of meat sometimes that is missed when we're just trying to fill in. We're just trying to listen for what is there. So today, I, I've asked Melissa if she would hand out. I want everybody to get a red pen and a yellow highlighter. If you do not already have one, raise your hand, and we'll make sure we get some to you. Melissa's my wonderful, lovely assistant. Oh, I? I got oh you found yeah. So okay. everybody, a red pen and a yellow highlighter. And I'm going to explain why in just a bit. Now raise your hand if you need one. She'll get one to you. Okay? Now if you have your own pen, highlighters, markers, even better. Perfect. So. Are we already starting? Are we already starting with the tissue? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you can take the yeah, but I just feel like Oh, don't worry about the camera. I don't care about the recording. Yeah. I'm obeying my husband. He wanted this recorded. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind. Those of you that are watching this later, this is a for real session, so you're going to get what you're going to get. I said what I said. 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 That's a running joke. <laughs> I think it's going to run to the it's end gonna of time. It's going to run to the end of time, into eternity. So um, anyway, so yes, we are recording this because there's quite a few ladies that are out of town and some are not well. So uh, they, want, they want the lesson, which we want to make sure we get that to them in its entirety. All right? I love you ladies. Bye -bye. <laughs> and let's welcome Cindy back. Oh, my gosh. Yay! Oh, my gosh. Yay! 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 We Yay! have missed you. you guys so much. It's going to be oh. long. And our, our condolences, we've been praying for Thank you and your you. family. Her mama went home to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. And so she just had a lot to handle, but we have missed you. And thank you. So good to have you home. And if I could just say something. It, yes. We know the reality, what Jesus said, that he went to make to make a home for us so that Amen. where he is, they, she can be there too. Yes. And that's exactly where she is. And it's that truth that sets me free from grief and mourning yes. and being inconsolable. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 That true. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So today, oh yes, and we have a new friend, a new sister, new new to our Bible study. She came to uh, prayer on Tuesday. Sister Brenda, welcome. Because we want everybody to feel welcome yeah. and know that Equip Church is. Uh, our heart is to just to love on God's people. Amen. Welcome, Amen. Brenda. Right. Yeah, welcome. Nice to have welcome. you. So good to have you today. Um, all right, so today, pen, highlighter. As we go through this, I'm going to kind of read through it and then just kind of like we normally do and just dissect it as we go along. Um, that seems to work for us. And if you feel like you want to inject something, then by all means, this is a, this is a collective because I'm not the only one that knows. I don't know everything. We've got some amazing seasoned women in the Lord that have that have learned the power of abiding. And I want you to be able to share your wisdom, share your experiences. And if you have a question, by all means, raise your hand and we will do our best to answer every question that you have. Okay? Let's pray before we get started. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every amazing woman that carved out time from her Saturday to be in your house today, to understand the importance of coming together, not just fellowshipping with each other and gathering, but also with a heart ready to receive and learn of your word. 
so that we can be the best disciples of Christ that we can be. And Lord, I ask that as we share this teaching this morning, that your word would just go deep, deep into our hearts, deep into our minds, deep into our spirits, and that it would just go so deep that it would just take root and it would grow and it would produce much fruit. Not for our benefit, but for the benefit of the kingdom of God. And I ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. So if you look at your cover, this is by an artist that I found on Instagram, and I can't remember his name because I want to give him credit. Um, if you look at, you ever, does everybody see what the roots spell? Can you see that? At first, at, at first sight, you don't see what it is. It's called the power of abiding. The roots spell out Jesus. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> But also, more importantly, not more importantly, but also in addition to that, look at the background behind the tree. What's going on? Storm. The storm. Storm is going on in the background. You see leaves flying. I think I see a bird being flown around. Uh, I see branches broken. I see the dust kicked up. So this is why it's so important for us as believers to understand the importance of abiding and the power that comes with abiding. So I'm a words person, I'm a words lady. I love to know and understand the meaning of a word. So Webster's Dictionary is kind of one of my best friends or Google is my best friend sometimes. So uh, I wanna share with you the meaning of abide. The English word abide is a translation of the Greek word meno, which also means remain. And the Hebrew word yashap, which means to dwell. This word has a range of possible translations, including to stay, to lodge with, to wait for, to keep on, to continue to exist, to persist, to reside, to tarry, to stand fast, to stand firm in battle. Basically, abiding is active. It's an active word. So. Your highlight and your pen are gonna come in handy for you. I want you to highlight, circle anything throughout this study that just jumps out at you, that speaks to you, okay? So that's what those are for. So if we think that abide only means to remain or stay, then we're not truly grasping its meaning. We can passively remain or stay in a particular place, like sitting in a chair, but abide means more than that. Abiding is an active, firm, commitment. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm here to do whatever needs to be done. I'm here. I've made a commitment. So this is what 1 John teaches us. If you want to abide in God, first and foremost, it begins with faith. So highlight that. It begins with your faith. What does that mean? It means you need to make an active firm commitment to flee from sin, to run away from sin, and to turn to Christ regularly. Regularly meaning daily, on a daily basis. 1 John 3, 6 says this, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. So what does that mean? That means we don't continually, willingly sin. Now we're human and we're going to have moments where Oops. <laughs> but in the moment, immediately, the Holy Spirit's going to convict us and say, hey, uh, 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 come on, come correct. Right. So if you are willingly sinning, oh, I know God's going to forgive me anyway. No, honey, boo boo, no. It does not work that way. If you're willingly doing something, saying, I, I know this is a sin, I know, but I'm just going to, God will forgive me, then you are not abiding. Because it begins with your faith of making a commitment of faith and confessing your sin to Jesus, okay? Number two, it continues with repentance. You need to make an active from commitment to flee from sin. So the moment that sin that's so attractive to you that we sometimes tend to run to, run from it, and you turn to Christ, turn to Jesus Christ regularly, daily, okay? Did I skip one? Yeah. Oh, I did, yeah. So. It begins with faith. Yeah, you need to make an active, firm commitment of faith, confessing that Jesus is the Son of God. Sorry, that was the first one. It jumped out. So whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, then God abides in him. That's step one. First step, Jesus. Yes, I know you died on the cross. 
Now, I know a lot of you know this, but sometimes we need to go back to the basis. We need to go back to the who, to the cornerstone, to the foundation of where our relationship and our belief and our commitment to Jesus Christ is in order to know how to abide, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how to have the power to abide in God, okay? So first commitment, yes, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Second, then that. You need to make an act of first commitment to flee from sin, to turn to Christ regularly, daily. So we don't abide in him. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him, <laughs> truly known him. Mm -hmm. Okay, number three, it extends to God's word. It extends to the word of God. You must make an active firm, firm commitment to read God's word, to meditate upon it, and to allow it. <coughs> Ooh, I, I want you to highlight this. To allow it to affect every part of your life. I'm going to read that again. You must make an active firm commitment to read God's word. Not just on Sundays when pastor is preaching and it's on the screen. Read it daily. Read it regularly. Okay? Meditate upon it. Say, God, give me scripture. Okay, what does this mean, Holy Spirit? How am I going to digest this into my spirit, into my soul? Meditating upon it and allowing it to affect every single part of your life. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. Every aspect of your life. How is the word of God affecting us? And standing firm on his truth, God, you said in your word that I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging for bread. And time and time again, he's going to say, yep, I said that. And I will hold true to my word because I'm not man that I would lie. 1 John 2.24 says, let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. Having God's word abiding in us means more than reading it occasionally. To abide in God's word, I want you to highlight this part. To abide in God's word means to stand fast in God's word. To dwell in God's word. And to persist in God's word. <clears throat> It means that we are soaked and saturated with God's word, standing fast in its truth because the word of God is the truth. There's no abiding in God without God's word penetrating deep into our hearts, into our minds, into our entire life. Number four, it endures by perseverance. You must make an active, firm commitment to stand fast and persevere to the end. 1 John 2.19 says this, They went out from us, but they were not of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain, that it might become plain that they all are not of us. Mm -hmm. Those who truly abide in God will persevere until the end. I want you to highlight that. Mm -hmm. Those <laughs> who truly abide in God will persevere until the end. John talks about those who came into the church for a while. They showed some passion and excitement, but eventually they wandered away. They left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says that they wandered away because they were never truly part of the body. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get into that in a bit. Not truly abiding in God. If they were truly abiding in God, they would have continued abiding in God until the very end. There is no abiding God, abiding in God without standing fast and persevering to the end. Mm -hmm. So this scripture came to my mind. It's not in here, but I want you to write it down. 1 Corinthians. Ooh. Yes, you know it. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I'm going to read it, but I want you to write the address down, and you can add it in later. And I want you to write the word steadfast next to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And then write steadfast next to that. And it says, therefore, my beloved brethren and sister and sisterhood, equip sisterhood, be steadfast, immovable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
knowing that your labor is not in vain. Does somebody else want to read another version? Because that's a, and I think that's the what NASB. I think that's NASB or N NKJV. Oh. Somebody have uh, yeah, go ahead. I have NASB. Okay, I think read that one. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Toil. Labor, work, toil. Does anybody have the message version? I want to just simplify it. If not, I can look it up. Somebody want to look it up? Have it? Do you have the message Bible, Mama? No. Here. I'll pull it up right quick. Just because I, I like to get a variety of them because everybody's understanding levels are on different. And this was just something Holy Spirit just downloaded real quick. 1558. Alrighty. Let me find it real quick. This is one good thing about having your Bible on your phone. That's the only time I like it. For quick reference. Okay, so fifty-eight. With all this going for us, my dear, dear friends, stand your ground mm -hmm. and don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the Master, confident that nothing you do for Him is a waste of time or effort. That's the message. Yes. Did you say stand your ground? Stand your ground. It reminds me of the territory that God gives us. Yeah. And just fighting for that. What God gave us and if if things go and you're standing your ground to take it back. But stand your ground so that the enemy don't come in and steal. Let him just yeah. steal no more. No, no more. Uh uh. This is I'm I'm gonna abide right here. I'm so you better believe. <laughs> Did your kids ever do that? <laughs> Mine. I don't want to. And they stood their ground. Do we? No. No, real talk. Do we? There's no abiding in God without standing your ground, standing fast, persevering to the end, pushing, not giving up, not quitting. Okay? So where are we in our nearness, in our closeness to Christ? I'm, I'm just take a minute. I want you to think, where am I? I want to change that to make it personalized. I want you to write that. Where am I? Just write that in there. Where am I in my closeness to Jesus, in my closeness to God, in my closeness to the Holy Spirit? Because we serve Trinitarian God. We're going to get to that in a bit. Where are we? Where am I? Where am I right now? in my relationship, in my nearness. See, the mental image of abiding extends further to the concept of rest. Rest. When we abide, we dwell. What do we call our homes? They are our place of what? Dwelling. Dwelling. We live there. Do we live under the shadow of God's wing? <clears throat> abiding? That safe haven, that safe place, that high tower, mm -hmm. that stronghold for us. When we abide, when we dwell in God's presence and we remain, we experience his power to overcome. Yes. Now, just like the cover on this study, overcome what? What do we need to overcome? The storms. Storms? What else? What do we need to overcome? Life. What comes at us in life? <laughs> what? What'd you say? We both said life. Life. So, but, but, okay, and that's, you are generalizing it, but I want us to really, let's break it down. Go ahead, Tish. I don't think of just overcome, but get over ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to overcome ourselves. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's the first step. Oh Before God. anything life throws at us, who's your worst enemy sometimes? Ourselves. ourselves. Me, myself, and I, the yep. unholy trinity. <laughs> I said what I said. The unholy trinity. <laughs> Me, myself, and I. Honestly, because by nature, humans are selfish. Think of ourselves, or da -da 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 -da, all the things that come with it. So when we abide, when we come under the shadow of God's wing, when we learn to rest, when we learn to remain, we learn to stay 
stand steadfast mm -hmm. gives us the power to overcome, first of all, our flesh, mm -hmm. ourselves. Once we take that first step and we surrender and say, God, not me, but you. Not mm -hmm. my will, but your mm -hmm. will first. Hallelujah. That's a hard prayer. Do we, we, got, do we really mean it? God, I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Careful with that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Because to know him is to know him in the fellowship. In meaning, if Christ suffers, so will we as so his believers, we. as his followers, as his disciples. Mm -hmm. The scripture that says, uh, in this world, you will have trials and you will have tribulations. That's a pro That's, that's yeah. guaranteed. <laughs> but, I love the buts in the Bible. Mm -hmm. All the butts, little butts, big butts, medium butts, all the butts. <laughs> I like all the butts in the Bible, and I cannot lie. <laughs> oh, heck no. I did. I said when I said. We experience his power to overcome all of that. All of that. All the chaos and the rushing about and this and that and the trials, the sicknesses. The challenges in relationships. <laughs> yes, go ahead and laugh. I'm trying to move forward. See, so I can never behave. <laughs> the power to overcome. So make little notes. This is your study. I'm just sharing what Holy Spirit gave me to share with you, but think about it. What have you had to overcome in your life? And on the daily, it is ourselves. So that's the first step, but also a continual step. Yep, yep. We die. How often? Daily. Daily. Die to our flesh daily. Because the flesh won what the flesh wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to die daily and say, God, I surrender my will. I surrender my way. Do what you need to do in and through me. Today. This hour. Right now. Just this hour. In this moment. In this moment. Mm -hmm. That's where you experience his power. That's what God's power is for, to help us overcome, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And by power, I mean the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll get into that in a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. And I love this next part. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And we also experience his peace yes. to be held and kept. Mm -hmm. When you're peaceful, mm -hmm. when this baby over here, when little Abraham mm -hmm. is peaceful, most of the time, he's good. He's a good baby. But Lisa, you notice when he's at most peace is when he's where? In your arms. In your arms. Mm -hmm. When he's being held. When he's being kept. When he's, when he's being held safe. And if you have not felt safe for a while, I want you to know there's safety. Mm -hmm. In the peace of God when Amen. you abide in him. Oh, yeah. Let him hold you. Sometimes, we, like when our kids are fussy and they're crying, I don't want to tire. I don't want to tire. I don't want to You know they're tired. You know you're tired. It's nap time. I don't want to tire. I don't want to And then they're knocked out on the couch folded like this. <laughs> on the ottoman. In the high chair with food. Because so <laughs> they're fighting their sleep. Don't we do the same thing to God? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's like, shh. Facts. Come abide. Mm -hmm. Come abide. Mm -hmm. but come I want what come I get want. the peace <laughs> that you need with me. I'm the only one mm -hmm. who really can give you what you come away with me. Yeah. You gotta lock yourself in your closet or in your bathroom. I know so many women like the only yeah, and even then, you got little fingers coming under the door. Mommy! Ah. Or if your children are grown, then it's, I got to rush them here to soccer practice, basketball practice, uh, football. I, the rushing about. I'm tired. God's like, okay, so carve out time. Carve out, car like you carved out time to be here. I'm sure you had other things you needed to do or could be doing carved out, set aside, appointed a time mm -hmm. to say, I'm worth getting what I need for you, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because of what I do on a daily basis, giving out, watching children, mm -hmm. working with sometimes crazy mm -hmm. 
co-workers dealing with your husbands and your husbands dealing with you. Ask Pastor. His life is crazy. <laughs> She's nuts, but she's fastened to the right bolt. <laughs> Let him Let his peace come upon you. Let him hold you. Be kept. Be held. When the Holy Spirit revealed that to me, we were talking about Jaden the other day. How many have received a hug from Jaden? Count yourself blessed because she don't hug just anybody. She hugs Ty. She hugs Ty. But what does she do when she hugs? I feel like they're warm. She, well, she, embraces, you. she embraces you. She is in the moment. She, her hug lingers. You feel it even long after her arms are removed from you. She is my joy. She is my joy. I had her at 30. Girl, I was a, my body was like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> Ten years after your first, you must be. And you know she's diagnosed with autism with with high functioning uh, Asperger's and you know, but you wouldn't know it. She's overcome so much, but even through all of that, it's because my baby has learned to abide. And it is innate in her. It actually is innate in all of us. And by innate, I mean it's already in you. It's woven within the fabric of who we are as God's children, yep. and how he formed us, how he shaped us. There's that God-shaped hole mm -hmm. that only he can fill, but there's also mm -hmm. that God-shaped desire. Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss a point. Go ahead. I don't want to miss a point. Please, see please. the beauty of, of her being who she is. Like, if, if we put ourselves in her shoes yeah. as a child of God, when she hugs you, she melts into your body mm -hmm. because she knows that she's safe with you. Mm -hmm. So we should melt in, back by, in. into God we're because we're that. safe with him. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing, and I'm so glad you brought that up. When she melts in, this is what she's told me. Because I didn't get a lot of hug and affection as a child. She's like, Mommy, I hug you the way I hug you because you will need it. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Wow. Because you will need, you need it. You need my love. Mm. Wow. You you need this. Your your soul, your spirit need <laughs> this. You need to be held. Yeah. You need to be kept. Mm. We need that from God. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on. So, page number four. It is impossible, and I want you to just circle this with your highlighter, underline it, whatever. Whatever works for you. Asterisk, asterisk, put an asterisk next to it. However, whatever works with you capturing it. It is impossible for believers to bear spiritual fruit without abiding in Jesus. Mm -hmm. However. <laughs> circle however, underline it however. That's the but. Right, but, but, that's one of the buts in the Bible. It's just a more proper version of saying it. But fruit bearing will be a natural outcome when we actively abide in Christ and his word. Okay? So there's a powerful book called The Hiding Place. How many have heard of The Hiding Place? Okay. It's a true story of Corrie ten Boom, who survived the Holocaust at Ravensbrück, <coughs> one of Hitler's notorious concentration camps. Corey and her family risked their lives hiding Jews in their home and helping them escape the horrors of the Nazi regime during World War II. After saving about 800 Jews, as well as a good number of resistance fighters, Corey and her family were betrayed to the Gestapo by a man who requested help. This led to a raid on their house and the arrest of Corey, her father, her brothers, three sisters, and a nephew, four of whom gave their lives in the concentration camps. Corey survived and spent the next 33 years of her life, look at that, 33 years, mm -hmm. of her life traveling the world as a quote unquote tramp for the Lord as she, as she would refer to herself. Sharing the message of God's forgiveness 
and our need to forgive those who have wronged us. Mm -hmm. Endearingly known as Tante, which means aunt, Corey, to many, Corey shared the gospel and insights for Christian living using stories from her own life and simple object lessons. Mm -hmm. One of her well-known object lessons is her glove illustration. And I brought my lovely gloves that I bought in New York <laughs> many years ago. And they have a um, really lovely lining on the inside. <laughs> Cashmere lined. <laughs> One of her, I don't get to use these much because we live in the desert, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to use them today. I mean, wait for them home. Yeah, yeah, so this is one of her illustrations. So as she traveled, she would, she would carry a pair of gloves with her. Showing a limp glove <laughs> to her audience, she would say, I have a glove here in my hand. See, they still flip. Not show the fingers. I have a glove here in my hand, and the glove cannot do anything by itself. Mm -hmm. But when my hand is in it, <laughs> I can do many things. True, it's not the glove, but my hand in the glove that acts. We are gloves, and it is the Holy Spirit in us who is the hand. Oh. It's the Holy Spirit who does the job. Yeah. We have to make room for the hand so that every single <coughs> finger is filled. So unlike the glove that has no will, Corey recognized that we must make room for the hand of the Holy Spirit so that every finger is filled. This requires that we surrender every aspect of our lives to God, allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us. How many understand what transform is? What does transform mean? Lisa? Change. Change. Okay? To not allow us to remain the same. Okay? to transform us, to empower us. This glove has no power until I put it on. I can do stuff with it, okay? And use us for God's glory, okay? This is the message of Jesus in John chapter 15 when he taught that he is the vine and the believers are the branches. So 1 John chapter 15 verses 4 through 5 in the New American Standard Bible Version says, abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Because he who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So much like an empty glove has no power to do anything, a detached branch cannot bear fruit on its own. And let me grab something real quick. So, if you were wondering, maybe we ran short on grapes, it's my fault, because I kept this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how pretty. Look at how pretty the little vines are. Look at the branch. So what's coming out of the branch, guys? Fruit. Yeah. The vine. So here's the main branch right here. Goes right down the middle. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's coming out of the branch are the little vines, the little stems that produce these delicious grapes. Okay? So now I want you to see this. Mm. So I'm going to read that again. Much like an empty glove has no power to do anything, a detached branch cannot bear fruit on its own. So let's just say I pluck this off of, off of the, uh, off of the tree, okay? And if I let it sit, it's gonna die, but it won't produce fruit, okay? So a detached branch cannot bear fruit on its own. I want you to highlight that. No matter how much it strives on its own, you can say, "I'm trying. I, I, I'm part. I'm part of that. I came from that." I came from that tree. See me? I came from that tree. <laughs> no matter how much it strives in its own strength, grunting and groaning to squeeze out even a, a single little grape, it cannot bear fruit unless it has the life of the vine flowing through its fibers. And the only way a branch can bear fruit is if it abides in the vine, if it's still connected to the vine. In the same way, it is impossible for believers to bear 
spiritual fruit unless we abide in Jesus. However, when abiding, fruit bearing will be a natural outcome. When we remain, we're going to have this outcome and not this one. But we remain connected, connected, not torn away, but connected. Let's pretend this is still connected to the tree. This is what remains. And the fruit will come and get plucked, but the vine is still there. The branch is still there. And as long as that branch remains connected to that vine, the next season, you're going to have some more fruit. Yes? I like on page five, what you just read. Mm -hmm. When abiding fruit bearing will be a natural outcome. Natural outcome is natural. There's no strife. There's no contending. There's no striving. There's no it's forcing. It's fighting against it. It's just natural. It will pass if nothing comes upon it to make it not pass. So say that again. <laughs> It's natural. It will happen. It'll pass as long as nothing comes against it to make it not pass. Mm -hmm. As so, long as it stays abiding. So let's say a storm comes and the branch, it's, it's hitting and blowing on the branch and it's moving. So if something's coming against it, it's the interference. So again, there's the enemy comes against us. It's when, if that branch breaks, that causes an interference with the connection. Yeah. Yes. Can I build on Lisa? Please do. That I think of the striving for gifts. Mm. Okay. Please, yes, yeah, share that. When we sh we're striving for our gifts and our purpose, God's already given, and He's given according. But when we abide and not try to strive for whatever that gift is, mm -hmm. or whatever that purpose is, He's going to give you what you need in the abiding. And so we can heighten this desire to have the gifts, speaking in tongues, which is really the least of the gifts that we yeah. need to worry about, yeah. or walking in whatever the purpose is God's given you, that call, and you're striving to get there, but without the equation of the abiding, it's not going to naturally come. It's going to come with strife. It'll be forced. Confusion, it's forced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, too. If you try to force try to force fruit to grow if you pick it before it's time it's 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 going to be bitter it's yeah. not going to yeah. be sweet it's going to if you and that's what you're referencing is if you're oh but I, I have I know I have the gift of prophecy or I have the gift of um interpretation or I have the gift of the don't don't just purely serve God for the gifts because mm -hmm. the gifts are already in you mm -hmm. They will naturally come when you first and foremost yeah. abide. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Abide. Amen. You won't have to fight for them. You won't have to call your mom, your sister, your aunt. Your, yo, can, you, can you explain? Can you help? Can you show me? Can you? No, 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 no. Go to God first. Mm -hmm. Abide there first. Mm -hmm. That is your God. That is your Christ is your cornerstone, your firm foundation. Go to him. Go to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I just, I know you put something in me, and I want to, I want to fulfill my purpose, your plan for my life. I want to flow in whatever it is you've placed in me in your timing. But right now, more than anything, I just want to stand strong mm -hmm. in you. I want to abide. I want the peace that passes every human understanding to just surround. We want to pour out good fruit. We want good fruit. We don't fruit. want to pour out damaged fruit. On no. Fruit. How many like a bruised banana or a bruised apple or a bruised pear? Don't we cut those parts out? I know. I do too, right? Now. Yeah. But sometimes when it's just too much, when it's like too mushy, when it's too, too mushy. Banana bread. Banana bread. Yes. So it's good for something. But when you, let's say if you want to eat it fresh, though. Do you want to eat it? Jazz does not like yellow or brown bananas. She likes eating the banana while it's still green. I'm like, Mama, it's still not ripe yet. She goes, but I just like it. That's my husband. <laughs> to each his own. But spiritually speaking, yeah. we want our fruit to be good and at the right time. At the right time. Turn the next page, page six. You're going to like this one. <laughs> Maybe if I try just a little harder, just a little harder. <laughs> Abiding requires two conditions, okay? Highlight this, first and second. 
highlight first. A branch must be attached to the vine, like I just said earlier. Attached, remain attached. And second, it also must have the life of the vine flowing through it to bear fruit. So if, if I were to get a, a, um, a, what do you call it? Microscope. <laughs> a microscope. And if I were to put this under the microscope, you would see almost like these little tubes of where this branch before I cut it was connected to the vine where it was drawing forth the nutrients that the it needed. The fountain. The fountain. Yes. The fountain of life. Baby's umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. The baby's umbilical cord. You would see that. You'd be able to see the porous, fibrous, vibrant veins that gave this branch that produced this fruit life. Mm -hmm. And as long as it was attached to that vine, it will continue, okay? Mm -hmm. So abiding requires two conditions, attached to the vine, and it must have the life of the vine flowing through it to bear fruit, because simply being attached is not sufficient. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that. We've all seen dead branches attached to trees. I've had some in my yard where I'm like, why is that branch dead? Mm -hmm. Though it's attached, there is some internal damage preventing the flow of the sap into the branch. So though you can say, but I'm connected to God, but I'm connected to the church, but I'm, but where are you spiritually? Mm -hmm. Is there something in you that is not a healthy sap? Mm -hmm. That you've opened the door to, you've given the enemy a foothold mm -hmm. to come in and mm -hmm. to inject mm -hmm. unhealthy things that make we're going to talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. That make that branch unhealthy. Mm -hmm. we, all have the, we all have the potential to have those areas mm -hmm. as humans. Mm -hmm. When we abide in God, when we're daily with him, our prayer should be, God, show me. Is there anything that I possibly have opened the door to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there bitterness? Is there resentment? Mm -hmm. Is there unforgiveness? Is there hurt? Is there... Um, the love for other things above love for you that are bringing in things that are damaging me as the branch in you okay a branch must both abide in the vine and permit the life of the vine to abide in it so it's a two-way street it's not a one-way street it's a two-way flow <clears throat> two-way flow so similarly we must be united to Jesus Christ through faith and we must also surrender to the life of his indwelling Holy Spirit in order to bear spiritual fruit. Highlight that. We must surrender to the life of the Holy Spirit. Remember I talked earlier, the Holy Spirit is what gives us the power, the ability, the strength. Jesus says, I got it. He said, I got to go, but I'm going to send you what? The helper. The helper. The comforter. The one who will give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and strength. I'm going to send you somebody that's going to be with you every single day. He is with us every day. Are we aware of the presence of Holy Spirit? Just like you're aware of your phone in your hand, like you're aware, you don't go anywhere without these things. Even to the bathroom, some of y'all take these things. I went there. I said what I said. I need a shirt. Oh, yeah. Many Christian writers have used the words union and communion to describe the two realities of this mutual relationship. So we're going to break it down right now. So here's where you, I just want you to highlight union and communion all the way through this page. Union, communion, union, communion. The word union correlates with our position in Christ. John 15, 2 says, every branch in me. So we're united with the vine. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. Every branch in me. The word communion correlates with the power of Jesus Christ within us. Abide in me and I will abide in you. 1 John 15, 4 through 5. So these scriptures are here because I want you to go back, take this study this next week, 
go to coffee with somebody or yourself or, or in your own study. And I want, if these are not already highlighted in your Bible, I want you to highlight them and make little notations in your Bible. Yes, you can write in your Bible. It's okay. Jesus don't mind. Holy Spirit don't mind. I write mine all the time. It's falling apart. <laughs> Union refers to the truth of our right standing with God based on justification by grace through faith in Christ's death for our forgiveness. So let me, let me break this down a little bit, okay? Our union, our connection, our unity with God, with Jesus Christ, refers to the truth of how we're standing in God based on what he has justified. The Bible says you're justify, justified by faith through grace. Okay, justification by, I'm sorry, by grace through faith in Christ's death for our forgiveness. Okay, so he's already covered our sin. He's already justified, but he stands at the right hand of the Father interceding for, but that's my daughter. No, but that's, the, that's my daughter Rose. <laughs> that's, I died for her. She, my blood covers her. She's been made righteous because of me. Communion is the experience of the power. Okay, it's the experience of the power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we actively walk with Christ on a daily basis. So daily, daily walking, experiencing God's power through the Holy Spirit as we daily walk with him. Yes, Holy Spirit, thank you. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, God the Father. Good morning, Jesus. Thank you. Our attitude and juxtaposition to who God is in our lives. Amen. So there's an illustration drawing there. It shows the abiding, so it shows, shows the vine and shows the branch, and it shows the union and communion where they come together. Okay? Page number eight. The vine itself does not bear fruit. Jesus is not the one that bears the fruit. Okay? Jesus is the vine, and we are the what? Branches. The branches. However, the vine provides life to the branches like we talked about earlier. Bearing fruit is the responsibility. I want you to highlight this, underline it, put an exclamation mark next to it. Bearing fruit is the what? Responsibility of the branches. Though it can only be done through active reliance on the vine, we will not produce fruit if we don't wholly rely on Jesus. We don't wholly rely on God. We don't wholly rely on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We can't produce fruit without them. We cannot. But it is our responsibility to produce the fruit. Neither abiding nor bearing fruit are passive activities. You don't just sit by and think it's just going to happen. They must be actively engaged in by the branches. We're going to get into that in a minute here. Break it down. We have time. I'm going to go till noon, and then whatever's left, we'll do next month, okay? In fact, Jesus commands his disciples to abide in him. This places the responsibility on us as his disciples. And further, says, he appointed them to go and bear fruit, John 15, 16. Again, placing that responsibility on us. Go bear fruit. Go bear fruit. Bear, bear the fruit, Okay? Branches in the vine that do not bear fruit, oof, John 15, 2, cannot blame the vine for lack of life and power. I want you to highlight that. We got, we got, well, Jesus, it's your fault. No, it ain't. It says, mm, mm John 15, 2 says that. They must look to themselves and ask, am I truly abiding in the vine? And am I surrendering to the life of the Holy Spirit in me? Highlight that. Am I surrendering? Am I truly abiding in the vine? And am I surrendering to the life of the Spirit in me? Am I saying, Holy Spirit, have your way. Not my will, but yours be done. Just like Jesus told the Father, not my will. Can you imagine the, oof, what Jesus went through for us? So much, he knew what was coming. And when he was praying in the garden of get some money, I mean Gethsemane. I get some money. I heard somebody pronounce it that way. Gethsemane. Is that what I said? Gethsemane. He was praying. He knew the weight of what was coming. 
so much so that the pressure, have you ever had been under so much stress that your head feels like a bowling ball, that your head feels like it's gonna explode, mm -hmm. the, the pressure in your head? When Jesus prayed, because he knew, he prayed, beads of sweat turned to blood, capillaries burst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet in that moment, he still said, First, he said, let this cup pass from me. Yes. We've had those let this cup pass from me moments. I know I have. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then he said, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. So daily, that it should be our prayer as disciples. God, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not doing this for myself, mm -hmm. in and of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm on this earth because you placed me here for a purpose. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm on this earth because there's something that I need to accomplish for the sake of eternity. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go into that later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, that's a powerful lesson right there. Looking at our life in juxtaposition to eternity, looking at our life and everything that we say, everything that we do, mm -hmm. and the ripple effects it has into eternity. Where was I? Mm -hmm. Union. Here we go. Union is much like the legal covenant of marriage that binds a man and woman together. While communion speaks of the quality of the fellowship and relational intimacy. And I'm just going to read. I want you to highlight whatever stands out to you, okay? Within the marriage, uh, of relational intimacy within the marriage. It is not the legal union that gives the marriage vibrancy and satisfaction. A paper does not give your marriage vibrancy and satisfaction. Oh, you're married. There you go. Be vibrant. Be satisfied. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Though it authorizes the covenant rights and privileges of marriages, of your marriage. However, it is the quality of the communion that makes a marriage fulfilling and fruitful. Your one your relationship one to another mm -hmm. daily. This requires intentional participation by both partners. Mm -hmm. Intentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The marriage will only be intimate and fulfilling mm -hmm. to the degree that both actively and meaningfully engage in the relationship. It's a two-way street. There are many promises in Scripture that indicate God's commitment to have a relationship with us. In fact, if it were not for God's initiative in sending his son first, we would not have the privilege of knowing him. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He gave first. Mm -hmm. He gave first. Mm -hmm. He set the foundation. He set the groundwork. He gave groundwork. He gave first. Through Jesus Christ, God has made it possible for us to come boldly to his throne of grace. I call it throne of mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. Even in our time of need, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, it's not because of our own merits that we can draw near to him, but rather we have confidence to come into God's presence because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of what Jesus did, now we can boldly come before God's throne. So this enables us to draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith that he will draw near to us. Amen. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. So God promises that if we draw near to him, he will, highlight will, he will draw near to us. Not maybe, not could, not should, he will. It's a done deal. But who has to draw close first? We. We do. We have to take that first step in drawing close to him. He provided the way first through Jesus Christ. He took that first step, set the capstone, set the foundation. Now, it's on us to say, thank you for what you did. Now I come to you. Okay? So, uh, he will draw near to us, James chapter 4, verse 8, and Zechariah chapter 1, chapter 1 and 3. And that if we seek him, whew, he will let us find him. Highlight that. Mm -hmm. if, if you seek me, you will find me. If, what? Yes. Yes. Seek me with what? Half-hearted? All, All your heart. All your heart. You know, we do the things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. If you have your heart, when people say, I have my heart set on that, are our hearts?
heart set on pursuing God and abiding him? I had my heart set on having that Mexican sweet bread. I had my heart set on going to this place. I had my heart set on getting that car. I had my heart set on that house specifically. I had my heart set. Your heart, it involves the heart. Our heart. <laughs> if you seek me, you will, you will find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, your will, your desire, your ganas. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 2 to 4, and verse 2 to 4 and verse 15. So based on these and many other similar promises, those who draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards. Highlight that. So, first of all, do you believe He exists? And He rewards those who diligently seek Him. Diligently means, oh, I'm doing this. Yes. I'm steadfast in it. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. You set your mind. You set your heart. You set, I'm, I'm diligently, daily, going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to look for him. I'm going to press into him. Mm -hmm. I may not feel like it right now. I may feel sick or I may feel discouraged or I may feel overwhelmed, but I'm going to do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. God has done his part and is now waiting for us to take him at his word and do our part. Mm -hmm. Our relationship with God is Trinitarian in nature. I talked about this earlier. Trinitarian means we serve a God that we believe is threefold. God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, all in one. Okay? So we have fellowship with the Father, John 17, 3, and 1 John 1, 3. Okay, so I have these scriptures here so you can look them up. Okay? Highlight them. Number two, we, our relationship with God, we have fellowship with God, we, the Father, and we have fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ. Number three, and we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' teaching on the vine and the branches, he emphasizes our relationship with him, which is nurtured by the Father as the vine dresser. If you go back, God is the vine dresser. And he enabled, and enabled by the Holy Spirit, who is the life of the vine that dwells in the believer. So abiding is doing our part in deepening our relationship with Christ. Deepening means every day. Every day I'm hustling, hustling. Every day I'm deepening, deepening, deepening. Yes, I did. I'm saying it. I got to say it however you're going to remember it. And this is how you guys remember, okay? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that song. These are the foolish things that confound the wise. I'm wild. Abiding is doing our part in deepening, deepening, digging deep, digging deep our relationship with Jesus Christ and yielding. Yielding means to surrender willingly to the Holy Spirit's power in order to bear the fruit that brings glory to the Father. Why are we supposed to produce fruit? Because it does what? Why do we produce fruit? Feeds others. Feeds others, but ultimately it does what? The answer is right there. Bring glory, glory to the Father. Hello. Ding, 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 ding. Winner. Yes. Because you can say, that's, that's my daughter, Shirley. And she is producing amazing fruit. And that brings me glory. That brings honor to God. When our kids, oh, we are there with our cameras at their soccer game, their basketball game, even if they make a basket for the opposing team. We're there to what? Capture the moment of them doing what? Producing fruit and what they've been working hard at. Even though it's not perfect. Why? Because it makes us proud. It makes us proud. That's, that's my baby. That's my child. They do so good. Playing that violin all off key and everything. But they're getting it. Playing the piano, clang, clang, clang. Oh, that's my baby. <laughs> but we're proud of them. Why? Why are we proud of them? Because what, what are they do? What are they doing? What are they doing? 
they're bringing us joy. But what are they doing in all these activities? That they're working out their, that gift, that talent, that ability. Yes, Lisa, go ahead. Say, oh, I thought I heard you no, say something. No, okay. Okay, my brain, my ear heard something. <laughs> my ears. Yes, Sister Shirley. It makes us proud of them. It makes us proud of them. Yeah, that's right. Well, that God's the same way with us. We don't just produce fruit just to produce fruit so it falls off and then just rots. Fruit is meant to be enjoyed. If it's sweet, if it's good, if it's been if it's been nurtured just right, if it's allowed to abide on the branch, getting the nutrients that it needs from the vine. All right? Abiding in Christ involves walking in habitual fellowship with him. Habit, daily habit, daily, 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 daily habit. Talking to God, not just waiting for prayer night on Tuesday. I'm praying all the time. I'm praying all the time. All the, in my car, especially in my car. <laughs> Lord, help that driver that just cut me off. Shabba dabba dabba doo. <laughs> they are... Dad to my left, they almost, they almost clipped the front of me. I have to speak it. And those that have driven with me say, Amen, Pastor Rose. Yeah. <laughs> right, Martha? Right, Ashley? Y'all been in the car with me. <laughs> Lord, help this road rage. This is not good fruit. This is not good fruit. Don't get in the car with me. I'm a good driver. Don't get in the car with her. Or Pastor. He's worse than me. I said what I said. It's true. Habitual fellowship with him. This includes spending dedicated time with him. So look, I know your lives are busy. All of our lives are busy. All of our lives sometimes are chaotic. There's, you have to do the things that you got to do. However, but <laughs> carve out time. Even if it means you got to get up just a little early. Oh, but Pastor Rose, I love my sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's that working for you? <laughs> sure enough. Is it helping you in any way? I love my sleep too. I love, I love a good, I would love a good night. Last night I had a good night's sleep. Thank you, Jesus, without interruption from the sciatica. Thank you, Jesus. He knew I needed to teach today. But when you have interruption after interruption, interruption, car, find out, find the time. We find time for what we want to do. Exactly. Carve out time for what we want to do. Pray the prayer, God, let my heart want to connect with you. Give me that desire. We're going to get into that in a minute. I'm going to hurry along because there's so much, so much, so much. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Can you start third paragraph? There we go. It includes expressing words of thanksgiving and praise for his goodness. I want you to highlight everywhere it says his or him or he. Just highlight that word. His, him, he. His, him, he. There's a bunch of them in that paragraph. Okay? Because it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. It includes expressing words of thanksgiving, thank you, God, and praise for his goodness, lifting needs or concerns in prayer as they are presented, seeking his wisdom and guidance for a decision. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. Sometimes we're so busy calling everybody except God. Yeah. Amen. We should go to him first mm -hmm. before we pick up the phone mm -hmm. and call your auntie, your mama, your sister, yep. your pastor. Amen. We don't look. We're here to disciple you, but my question to you is going to be: Have you gone to God about this first? Mm -hmm. Right, Melissa? Yep. Have I not told you that many times? Yep. And she loves me for it because it's taught her. I go to God first. I gotta go to God first because Pastor Rose. Yes, she's here to help disciple me, but God is my source. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the vine and the branch. I'm gonna pull from that best resource that's the best place i could pull from mm -hmm. holy spirit okay prayer go to him first seeking his wisdom and guidance for decision asking him for his perspective on circumstances mm -hmm. being sensitive to how he wants us to respond to others so let me let me backtrack a little bit asking him for his perspective on circumstances i want you to write in there off to the side draw an arrow and waiting on him to answer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, God, but I'm going to wait 
I'm gonna wait on you to answer, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ha and, and give me the grace to wait patiently. <clears throat> Yep. Not impatiently. Oh, I didn't hear from God yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bunch of calls. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna run back and forth. I'm gonna go here and there. No, 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 no. Yep, Slow yep, your yep. roll down. Hold up. Wait. Okay. Can Being we, sensitive. Yes. Can please. we add? Oh, sorry. Can we, can we put that word as wait as abide? Abide. Just abide. 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 Yeah. Sit. Sit in that moment. Abide. 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 Being sensitive to how he wants us to respond to others, confessing the various subtleties of sin that become evident in our thoughts, our attitudes, our words, our behaviors, and asking him both for forgiveness and grace to overcome. It's seeking to maintain unbroken, unhindered, and open-hearted dependency and intimacy with him. I want you to highlight that. It's seeking to maintain unbroken, unhindered, and open-hearted dependency and intimacy with him. Jesus commands us to abide in his word, John 8, 31 through 32, and have his words abide in us, John 15, 7, and the promises that his truth will set us free and that our prayers will be answered. In fact, he promises that if we keep his commandments, we will abide in his love, causing us to experience his joy and our joy being made full. John 15, 10 through 11. And I think we're going to have to pause there and we'll save the rest for next month. Okay? Which I think that's a good place yeah, yeah. to pause today. Any questions? Because I don't want to leave if you have any questions whatsoever or if you have something you want to interject or share. Anybody? Yes. Did I get nerdy? I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I keep thinking about um, identity making and how... Usually in sociology, we talk about your identity is really made based on like the identity of the other person. And as you form your new self, it's kind of how the other person also like makes your new self by how they reflect to how you respond. Mm -hmm. And that kind of happens like with God, not in God being molded, mm -hmm. but in you being molded to be more like him. Yeah. So these similarities are kind of like, like matching him. Mm -hmm. And um, the union and communion part, so I code for work, and one of the languages we use is like SQL. Mm -hmm. So we actually have that term union, and there's another one called union all, meaning that from both tables that you want to join, everything like comes together. Mm. So but like a union by itself is just the parts that match. So your identity making is supposed to be matching what God is or who he is, and you're unioning him, then technically it's just the parts that overlap. And um, the part about communion, where it says like the quality of that fellowship and um, the intimacy of just like, of what God is, like we have this terminology of like joints as well, where you're also joining two tables, but it's not grabbing everything. This feels like a left joint. So whatever Jesus is, grab everything of me that is like him. Ooh. So it's kind of like funny how this mathematical correlation world just like yeah. oh yeah confirms god is a god of numbers you know. too so yeah. of course you know that coding come from jesus yes <laughs> <laughs> i love that thank you for sharing that i'm not i'm not a good tech person or whatever i yeah, slide it over to my husband here <laughs> set this up for me i can use it but i might do damage if i try to code or do something but i love that so it's true ladies for the next few weeks until we meet again Read through this again. Read up to, we're on page 10 towards the end. The last paragraph will contain part two next month. But take this with you. Reread it. Highlight it. Like I said, every scripture that is in here, open up your Bible. Highlight it. Make some notes that are here in your Bible. So next time, it's that's how our brains register things. That's how mm -hmm. our brains lock it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember here. This is why I have a hard time breaking in my new Bible because I already have everything. <laughs> so um, slow down I know life is busy I know you have things that you have to do that's part of life go to God first find the time carve out the time to abide in him and let him abide in you there's such peace there's that hug the lingering hug that you even feel long after his arms are gone that's why I pray Holy Spirit 
many times I pray when I'm feeling alone, when I'm feeling, Pastor, you feel alone? Yes, I'm human too. Mm -hmm. Girl, what you go through, I go through probably yeah. 10 times more because mm -hmm. <laughs> of the weight that I have to carry. Amen. Not diminishing what you go through because I know mm -hmm. y'all going through it. We all are. Mm -hmm. But we're not going through it alone. Right. If we abide, if we learn to right. abide. Steadfast, immovable. Yeah, okay, this storm came. Y'all have seen me go through. Y'all have seen me go through some stuff. Yeah, right. I've had many people say, Pastor Rose, how do you do it, Pastor Mom? Yeah. You still at that church? Yes, I'm still at this church. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes. We've been here 21, almost 22 yes. years. Yes. Jaden was one month old. And we have been through it. Those of you that have known the storm that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. I don't do it in my own strength. There is no, if I were to try to do it, I would not be here. Mm -hmm. But I know whose hand I can hang on to. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I know who can scoop me up and say, I got you, Mama. Amen. I know whose arms I can rest in. I know when I need that lingering hug, I know where to go. And that's what we as your pastors want for you. Do not be overcome by the world. Overcome. And how do you overcome? By the power of abiding. So take this. Study it for the next few weeks. Delve into it and ask Holy Spirit, bring more revelation to me than what Pastor Rose brought. I want you to share. Yes, Cindy. Um, if you want to give like a, a heads up or save the date for the new oh, yes. date for the Bible study next yes, month. Yes. Oh, Thank you for Thanksgiving. that. Yeah, so normally normally we meet on the last Saturday of the month. However, because of Thanksgiving in November, that Thanksgiving weekend is the 25th. And I know some of you go out of town or will have family in town. But we want to honor and respect that for, and, and have your time with your family. So Bible studies are going to be, it's going to be November the 18th. So mark your calendars, okay? November, Saturday, November the 18th. Same time, same place. And immediately after that is... Decorating partner. Yay. Yay. Yes. Ooh. We will be. Uh, decorating. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, and we don't have a lot left to go. So after that, right. we're going to have all of our Christmas stuff here. We do need help. Um, I'm going to see if Teen Challenge will set up the trees for us. So all we got to do is put the decorations on. <laughs> there and in the lobby, those of you that have helped before, it's a fun time. We'll have cookies. I might. <coughs> Contact a, a, a local bakery. Baker. Baker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so it's going to be a fun time. Tish is going to make some amazing co a cocoa bar, I think, or something. Yeah. Something yum. Something yum yum. Um, but anyway, I just, I'm so proud of every one of you. I love you all. Thank you for taking time today. Sorry we delayed a little bit. Yes, Sister Shirley. Would you repeat that November 18th is the ladies and then what's after that? And after that, we're going to decorate for Christmas. Okay. Normally, you know what, I normally do it on a Wednesday, remember? Okay. But we're going to do it that Saturday. Okay. So if you can, get here at 10, possibly, because I really want to start right at 1030. And we'll, we'll try to keep it within 45 minutes. It's not much left. And then immediately we go into decorating, okay? okay? Any questions, any comments, anything else? We're good? All right, Tish, will you pray? Will you pray to close? Let me stop Let's it. pray real quick before we leave, okay? Let me stop this. Yeah, just push stop.